Okay, how's it going? Uh, what can I tell you? Hi. Um, hi. Okay, I'm just going to jump Let's in. Jump in. Let's right. jump in. Let's jump in. So, uh, very happy to see Katie Lodge coming back. Thank you. I am so, too. what's going on with that? Katie oh, my Lodge. God. Well, you know, well, first of all, we love Katie. Um, and she's amazing. And she really was such a big part of season two. We absolutely had to bring her back for season three. And we made a, de- a recurring deal for uh, three episodes. But we've got ideas and, and sort of a need, uh, you know, certainly beyond three. So you're just going to see her in a recurring role the same way we have, you know, the way John Barrowman was a recurring in season two. Um, and, you know, it, it sometimes people are regulars and sometimes they're recurring and we go back and forth. And, you know, when they're recurring, just contractually, we have to sort of work around people's schedules. But we do that dance and we juggle everything around and as Katie is available um, you know one of the things we want to do for certain it's been on our bucket list since last year is we want to do a flashback story that basically takes Sarah from the shores of Lian Yu after the Amazo went down to uh, Nanda Parbat and becoming a member of the League of Assassins um, and how she meets Nissa and that, how that relationship developed uh, all, all that is something we are absolutely determined to do we just don't know what episode it's going to go in yet that's awesome uh, and one more question since you brought up John Barrowman can you talk a little bit about him and or his character and uh, taking Thea basically yeah yeah, well, you know, one of the one of the things that we really wanted to bring into season three that was present in season one but wasn't really a part of season two because of the nature of season two was the was the element of mystery. Season one had a lot of mystery to it, and like you know, there was the undertaking, there was the well dressed man who we revealed was John Barrowman, and we revealed what he was up to and the, the conspiracy, and there was a sense of like cloak and dagger that uh, season two, because it was a more straight up revenge story, didn't have. And we, one of the things that we decided at the beginning of season three was to inject, re-inject that element into the show. And uh, certainly John's character, Malcolm Merlin, allows us to do that because A, he's a mysterious figure, but also his agenda is mysterious. Um, and certainly we ended season two between him and Thea on this note of, ooh, what's going to happen next? And we're actually going to show you the remainder of that scene in the limo um, and, and what she said to him and what he said to her after uh, basically they looked at each other and we cut out. So you'll you'll get a chance to see, but it's a, a big part of the fun of season three is the mystery of of where is Malcolm, what what's Malcolm up to, you know, what's Malcolm up to specifically vis-a-vis Thea. That's that's going to be something that will evolve uh, and roll out slowly over the course of at least the first ten episodes. Okay, so so uh, that, that being said, then the Barrowman will definitely have a lot, much larger role. Oh yeah, he'll, he'll have, yeah he's a recurring. I mean, he's a, he's a he's a series regular, uh, and he'll be in at least eighteen episodes this year. So um, he's he's a part of the cast now uh, officially, and um, you know our goal is to you know surprise you. Like you know one thing we're, we're not like you know, going to do is, he's not the big bad of season three. You know, you're not going to end season three with a big fight between Malcolm and Oliver, because we've done that already. So, the fun of season three and Malcolm's presence in it is the unexpected ways that he is injected into the story. It seems like the series has fun finding that gray area between evil and anti-hero, yeah. you know, so can you talk a little bit about that, I guess, it's not just Merlin, but Slade and yeah. any other? Well, the thing we always say is every hero, every villain is the hero of their own story, which is, is another way of saying, like, um, when I was working on a show, at a, when I was working on Law and Order, I had the showrunner who says, no one wakes up in the morning, looks themselves in the mirror and says, boy, I, boy I'm an asshole. <laughs> and I happen to think that evil people don't think that they're evil. They think they're doing the right thing. So we've written our big bads always with that philosophy in mind, that they don't think they're evil. They just think they're doing what's necessary. Malcolm thought he was saving the city by destroying the worst part of it. Um, Slade thought he was genuinely, you know, screwed over by Oliver and was determined to get, you know, righteous vengeance. Um, You know, and that's going to also happen, you're going to learn more about the big bad uh, tonight in Hall H, but the big bad of season three will also have a similar, you know, self-righteous agenda. Um, And it's, part of it's gray, you know, because I think the world is gray, um, but also part of it is the fact that those characters are just more interesting and because they're more realistic. Again, you know, Saddam Hussein, you know, Osama bin Laden, you know, all these jerks don't, they didn't think they were jerks, <laughs> you know. Um, that's that's sort of the model that we're always looking at. Do you also look at it as an opportunity, or at least to leave maybe like a window crack to bring that character 
you know, one of those characters back as some sort of maybe reluctant ally at some point? Um, you know, I, that's always a possibility, and it's always fun. Like, you know, one of the things we always talk about is, like, Superman 2, Lex Luthor and Superman kind of teaming up, X-Men 2, Magneto and Xavier. That's always fun, you know. Um, it's not the reason we delve in the gray. I think the reason we delve in the gray, apart from the, what I mentioned, is the idea that when you have a character who basically is a vigilante killing people, um, you, you, that's a character who is also doing bad things for a righteous purpose. You've got to contrast them with a the bad guy also doing bad things for a righteous purpose and force the audience to say, well, really, what's the difference between this guy and this guy? You know, what, why is this guy a good guy and why is this guy a bad guy? You know, again, like, you could do the Slade Wilson show, tell that whole story from Slade's perspective, and he's the hero. Um, and, you know, that's, that to us is where the juice is, that moral complexity, that gray as you put it. Each season seems to have its own through line, its own theme. Yeah. What can you teach us about the first season? Yeah. Identity. It's all about identity. Um, that's actually why the trailer we released yesterday begins with, you know, the, the new portion, the, the non-season two portion of, of the trailer begins with, a man cannot live by two names. Um, for Oliver, certainly, it's, uh, you know, is it Oliver or is it the Arrow? Can he be both? What's what's the duality going on there? But what's cool about season three is that theme, normally our, th our theme and our through line is Oliver-centric. Um, and this year, that's certainly true. But this year, what's cool is that theme also resonates with all the other characters. You know, Laurel, am I Laurel or am I my sister? Um, am I, you know, Thea Queen? Am I Thea Queen or am I Thea Merlin? Um, am I Malcolm Merlin's daughter or am I Moira Queen's daughter? Um, Dig, am I a sidekick or am I my own man? Am I, you know, a crime fighter or am I a father? Um, you know, Felicity, am I, am I Oliver's crush object or do I have my own identity, you know, outside of him? Do I exist outside the lair? Um, everyone's got their own little question of identity and uh, dilemma this year. And that, that, to me, is the most exciting part because... It's cool to have a theme that we actually look at from all the different facets through all of our characters, because now we have a pretty large ensemble. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, cool. That's it.